This is a video showing how to add true strain to a stress strain diagram. The formula for determining the true strain of a sample is the following that is shown on the screen. We're now going to open the calculator and then create a calculation so that it will automatically calculate the true strain of the sample. So previously, this workbook has had the strain put in as the displacement of the crosshead divided by the original length of the sample. No units are placed over here because strain is inherently unitless. Now let's go ahead and put in the formula for the true strain. So we'll go ahead and do this by adding in the Greek letter. And then we will type in true to show that it's a true strain rather than the engineering strain. Then we'll go to the scientific calculator and click on the natural log. And the top, it's not going to only be the displacement, but it's also going to include the original length. If we look above, we can see that the gauge length of the sample is given by the variable L. And then to that, we're going to add the displacement that occurs during the test, which will be the position that's given by the materials testing machine. And we'll go ahead and uh, close this calculation off. And then we're going to divide by the original length of the sample, which again is the capital L. And since true strain is going to have no units, it will prompt us for units and then we'll delete those units. If you wish, you could put millimeter per millimeter or inch per inch if you're uh, choosing to do things in the imperial units. Okay, now that we've done that calculation, now we can go ahead and display that data. I'm going to close my calculator and I'm going to go to my display of my stress strain diagram. Because I'll have a second x-axis, I actually need to add a new graph to this page. I'll click hold on graph and drag that to the bottom of the page. We'll go ahead and assign the vertical axis to the engineering stress. And now, instead of time on the horizontal axis, I'll click here, and then instead select the true strain. These two displays will not automatically lock their displacements or their strains, so instead we have to manually align them. So we'll go ahead and do that here. So I've aligned the uh, 0.14 strain lines for the graph above and below. Since the true strain uses the instantaneous length of the gauge length as its initial length, you can see that the true strain of the sample is actually going to be less than the engineering strain. 